way way back in 2005 came together two awesome guys one was siege and the other devon and they became the best of friends 12 years later we're still talking but now we're recording what we say games and tv books and movies really anything okay Welcome, welcome, welcome to this, a very special episode of The Say Report. I'm going to be part of your hosts, I'm Devin Decker, and joining me from the, across the room and across the aisle... Yo, hey, sorry, I thought what, you were going <laughs> to... That's what you talk, that's what you talk, and you introduce yourself. We've been doing this, this is our fifth very special episode. May the fifth be with you. Oh, so close, we got so close. Hey guys, it's Seijin. <laughs> it's Seijin Sarawick, yay! All right. And... Da, 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 da. Oh, what are we doing? Okay. <laughs> we're, we're doing that. That, <laughs> us. that you nailed it. This whole episode, we tricked you. Um, we just, we're just gonna do. Just gonna that, sit here and sing us. the Muppet Show theme. <laughs> oh man, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Can we do Muppet Babies too? Can we just do all Muppet Show themes? Because I know that there are people who like Muppets tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Okay. All right. So. If you didn't get it from the description, from the title, which is a very special episode, spoilers for The Last Jedi, this is a spoiler episode for Star Wars The Last Jedi. I saw it, Seijin saw it, we braved the unwashed masses, the type of people <laughs> who clap when something happens on screen. And I gotta be honest with you, Seijin, uh, this is, this is yeah. before anything. And again, it's the same, like, r writing a mail letter to myself and sending it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those words in the proper order. Um, I would like to develop tiny microphones, right? Tiny, tiny microphones that <laughs> wirelessly connect um, anywhere in the world. And we sell these to directors, right? Like Rian Johnson or Ryan Johnson. I don't know. It's, it's the spelling of R-I-A-N. I think, it's it's probably, I think it's like, Ryan. It's probably like it's probably like Ran. Like the I is silent. <laughs> Rian. Rian. Rian Johnson. And we sell it to directors like Rian Johnson. Um and, and what it is what this system does is they then distribute them to theaters all across the world so that when people actually applaud during a movie, they get to hear it. <laughs> so that these people are not applauding for literally no reason. <laughs> I'm, I mean, like, oh, am I a little I am bit never, salty? Am I a I am little bit salty? Never gonna be the guy that applauds a movie. I am not. I want that to be out there. But I am also firmly in the camp of if you enjoyed a movie so much that you want to get out of your seat and clap, I I am happy Dude, for you. And here's the thing: <laughs> after a movie, I really don't care, right? I, I I as like as much as I'm being a dick and saying that we should market a system so that those people actually. <laughs> <laughs> those people actually have a voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do. Where what I have a problem is when a breathtaking, beautifully built scene happens in a, in the middle of a movie, and then people clap afterwards, completely pulling me out of the film. Like I've been watching. Hey, yeah. Okay, wait. Well, we're not. What spoilers haven't happened yet. So this is it. We're going to give you. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're giving you ample warning. We put it in the synopsis. Here we are now. Five minutes. You what? Five, five minutes. minutes in and... we, well, we know. We, we, they still have another minute of us being dicks before the spoilers for Star Wars The Last Jedi begin. And the way I want to do it, I saw Daddy's Home 2 again. And you know what people are not <laughs> talking about enough regarding Daddy's Home 2? <laughs> what? Mel Gibson's character. It's existence. It's a, it, Mel Gibson's character, he was a fucking astronaut. Like, that's, that's what he did. Like, I'm an astronaut. <laughs> like, like, Mel Gibson meets John Lithgow, right, playing his father, and he's like, Captain, and he salutes him, and he goes, I really liked your work piloting the space shuttle, Endeavor. And it's like, the fuck? <laughs> and like, the first time you see Daddy's Home 2, that happens and you're like, oh, that was a choice, huh? I don't hate it. There's a good. There's a choice, right? They made a. Oh, choice. there's a there's a really wild choice okay. in this Will Ferrell comedy that I'm watching, and I don't understand where but that this, came from at the all. Second time you watch Daddy's Home Two, you're like, oh, 
that's a thing that does not get enough discussion. <laughs> so while we leave you with that spoiler for Daddy's Home 2, spoilers for The Last Jedi begin now. All meh. right, David. Meh. So, okay. Meh. So you're in a meh. You're in the meh I am, I am currently TJ Miller from the Emoji Movie. No. Oh. Um, and, and, and you know what? <laughs> Better than, actually. I, I, yeah, right? I, I guess I'm Stephen Wright. Yeah, me. there you go. I'm actually his mother. Because his mother is. is the one who has the inability to change anything, right? Spoilers for the Emoji Movie. Spoilers, spoilers, Let's spoil spoilers. every movie but Star Wars in our Star Wars spoiler. Oh, no, we're going to spoil the shit out of Star Wars and because it's cathartic and I need it. But I don't think I would be as aware of how meh I feel about it if Jeff, after the movie, he was taking tickets. I saw it in Seekonk. And I, I go up to him, like, creeping, like, sneaky, to jump up and just go, spoilers! But not, like, actually say anything. And right. before I can get it off, right, before I can do my devious Joker-esque attack on Jeff, he goes, before you say anything, was it good? And I was not expecting that moment. That moment where, like, please take the literal two and a half hours you just spent with Star Wars and The Last Jedi and condense it to an answer to this question. Was it good? And my response was just, meh. So that's where I'm at. I am currently sitting at a meh. I think <laughs> it's the best Star Wars they've made yet. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. I have I have no I have no in between. There's no joke here. There's no build. <laughs> at the end of the day, I walked out of this movie not but an hour ago and the first words out of my mouth were I think that's my favorite. And I distinctly did not say that about the first. In the last episode, we had a long discussion about how good that one was and how you would never really beat Empire, though. <laughs> like, that was, like, the consensus that, at that table that night. Is that fair to say? I was going to take this moment to remind everyone that Sejin is not aware of Empire Strikes Back's existence. No, but no, But he no. took the legs right out of the at oh, no. and it was that joke. I'm fully aware, because in all honesty, they just spent two hours reminding me of its existence, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, they really only spent like five minutes in the middle reminding us of its existence. Mm -hmm. And those yes. five minutes felt completely unnecessary to me. No, no. I see like I there was a moment where when it first happens where I had the same thought where I was like, oh, no, what are you guys doing? Like, there's not a new character in the scene. All of this other stuff. That's, what are we doing? Why am I not saying it? When Yoda shows up. When Yoda, fucking Yoda shows, shows up in this movie. Yoda shows up in this movie. No fucking reason. No, no, no. Not no reason, though, because. OK, so like there is one of the things that I've really actually enjoyed about um, Last Jedi and Force Awakens is how much they actually feel like they are part of the same universe as episodes 4, 5, and 6. And 1, 2, and 3 never felt that way, which was a huge problem that I personally had with them. And so, like, the fact that they were they're still revisiting and telling Luke's story, and that's the reason that this happens, is because this is, in a lot of ways, this is Luke's movie, as much as the first one was Han's. And then I bet you the last one is going to be distinctly Leia's felt entirely by her absence. I think it was absence. going to be. No, 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 no. Because I, I think that it's going to be an important absence in that film is going to be her. I, I mean, they have to open with a funeral, right? Like, that's how the next one opens. Like, that, that can't be a surprise to anybody, right? And and then the entire movie, it is all about treating her in a, almost a godlike fashion for their movement, right? Like, Well, she's as pretty godlike in this movie. Mm -hmm. but yeah, sure no, we'll they, they definitely there. She's the prophet. She's the prophet in the religion. That's who she is, you know? Like, to, to Luke being the Jesus, she is one of the, the, the followers, Except right? Except like, the fact that she is fucking space Jesus, literally, in a scene in this film. That, like... <laughs> that may, Okay, that, like, you've already addressed the Lost episode. So, like, mm -hmm. there's no gin anywhere near me. Just, like, so we're all aware. I ate IHOP <laughs> pancakes. I got IHOP on the way home. Nice. They do takeout now. IHOP takeout. It's worth oh my god, that's evil. That it's is evil. the dark side. It's funny. That's the true dark side. Um, yeah, like, all right, so first of all, you say that these feel like they exist in the same universe as 4, 5, 6. And mm -hmm. I will agree with you. And that is why shit in this movie, like comedy that feels like it's punch up by a comedian that they found on the street, ripped me out of the film. 
No, man. Oh, come on. Because holding it's, for it's, Hux it's, was bullshit. Holding it's for Yoda, Hux was bullshit. I'm not, it's Yoda gonna... giving Luke crap when he's training in Empire. <laughs> like, think of all those goofy ass Muppety moments in that movie when when he's training him, and right? Yet, but it's <sighs> like that's what it is. Is it's that style of comedy, or like R two running into stuff or beeping about things? Granted, it's it feels like they leaned more into it now, but I think that that's honestly because if you want to get more people interested, you need to open yourself up a little bit. And and I don't think that it ever it didn't ever rip me out, out of the narrative in any way. There were just definitely moments where it was just goofy. But like, I don't know, man, you go back, you watch four, five and six. There's some go- I mean, think of that like Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi is that to like to the max. That's where they cross the line for me. And this, this is still, this is so much more dialed back, so much more nuanced than Jedi ever was okay, in terms okay, of. Okay, like, okay, okay, okay. We're not talking about it as a whole. We're talking about the actual. Uh, well, I, not we. I am not talking about it as a whole. I'm talking about all of the moments that felt like reactionary. The thing about the Force Awakens, right? The Force Awakens, mm-hmm. literally. Well, that's not true because I saw Revenge of the Sith. So, Force Awakens was literally the second Star Wars movie I saw in a movie theater. Okay. That that's that's the, and, and it's the first one I saw as like a cognitive human being, right? Like let's let's be completely honest about it. Mm-hmm. I didn't see it at midnight after hanging out and watching Muppet Treasure Island or something like that, because that's what we always did. We'd always come to my house on these midnight release days. We'd watch Muppet Treasure Island, which would send the entire <laughs> group of people to sleep. And then we would wake up and get to the movie theater too late. <laughs> so we would have <laughs> shitty seats and all be hungover tired. Like, not actually hungover, but like... No, like tired hungover. We didn't really you. sleep. No, I want to make sure that other people get me. I know that you get me. <laughs> um, so, like, it, this is... The, 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 and The Force Awakens, I legitimately loved. I legitimately loved that movie, and that is why I was mm-hmm. excited for The Last Jedi. I was excited to see this movie... <laughs> and maybe that excitement is part of the reason why I feel kind of meh, because I wasn't expecting anything from Force Awakens. And I don't want, I want to say I tried to manage my expectations with this one, um, but I still feel kind of ugh about what I saw. Um, but the, the parts that, the thing about Force Awakens that I never got were people being like, this was funny. Like, this is legitimately funny. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, there were funny moments, but, like, if that's what you're focusing on in The Force Awakens, that's weird to me. Because there was also, like, a pretty good story, and, like, it beautifully, like, set me back into the world. It was Sonic yeah. 3 and fucking Knuckles, <laughs> is what it was. It felt like the same game. Mm-hmm. It felt like that same universe. But I feel like that it's legitimately funny was a note that they took from The Force Awakens, and they tried to add that. So it was it was organic in The Force Awakens, and it was artificial in The Last Jedi, is, is where it felt. Like, every time that they were trying to get me to laugh, I didn't laugh. There were moments in this movie where I legitimately laughed, and, like, that was funny. But the time, like, seriously, him, like, I'm holding for, for Hux... I'm like, I understand what you're doing, but also this feels like a parody of Star Wars. This <laughs> seems like what Mel Brooks... Spaceballs. Like, like fucking Mel Brooks up, fucking yeah. saw this movie tonight, right? Because that's what yeah. he does. And he's like, well, there's a whole scene from Spaceballs 2 gone. <laughs> oh, man. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what to say. Like, we we were in an audience full of people laughing their asses off at it. <laughs> like, so. Okay, so, like, I was in an audience full of people who literally, like, applauded everything. It was like a fucking musical. And yeah. they applauded after every song. Um, But also, there was a woman sitting behind me who, like, this was, honest to God, her first Star Wars movie. Oh, that's amazing. Like, who's that? Is that, is that Princess Leia? Please, why? Why are you behind me? <laughs> oh, God. When does that Han Solo character show up? When, when does he come into the picture? <laughs> He's never said Ford in it, right? God, it was, <laughs> God, it was terrible. I, but, uh, and I, like, eventually she shut up, which was good. But, like, the last thing that she said before her friend was like, you need to stop talking, was, I think that's her dad. And I'm like, <laughs> who? Who? <laughs> Luke Skywalker? <laughs> Like, who's clearly not her dad, that they've, like, gone through every loop to make sure that you get that. 
this is yeah. the moment where you decree I think that's her dad <laughs> yep at this point in the film i've decided that this must be so oh that's fantastic i don't know man i like i don't know what to say about the humor thing because like i, I part of it is reactionary maybe not even just to um the F force awakens but like to basically a lot of what was going on in movies in the last like 10 years right i mean thanks christopher nolan everything since like the dark knight has been like dark and broody right and so it was a big surprise when force awakens actually had humor in it it was the first kind of reboot that we saw that wasn't a gritty reboot you know and like so that was just a pleasant surprise and so just to see that continuing and and like i said and comparing it to the older films like it, the older films are fucking goofy, man. I mean, like, I think that's part of it is maybe what you felt was kind of like a, a sense of irreverence. Like, this isn't working for me. Like, this isn't, it, this doesn't fit this world. Whereas, like, I come at it from a, as a kid watching Star Wars only when I was younger wanting to watch Jedi because that was the only fun one. You know, like when I was a kid, that's what I felt. Now, in my older years, I can look back and recognize how, you know, insane that thought is. But, it still hits that spot for me, you know, and that's another. It's it's you know part of it is nostalgia. That's true. For me, and I don't have that nostalgia. So like I'm 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 half I'm missing a half an audience member. When like there are people who are legitimately going to finally live out their dreams of seeing these movies in theaters and to have their childhoods renewed and reborn. And I get that I am not that part of it. And mm -hmm. like I don't know it. <sighs> The, I mean, that's not an excuse, though, too. Like, I want to make sure that I'm clear on that. Like, that, like, like the movie cannot rest its laurels on just nostalgia alone, right? Like, it, it needs to, it needs to also be a good movie on top of that. Which is of this movie that really worked for me, too. And I'm sure we'll get to them. Um, but the humor was the thing. Because the humor stopped. It was like the first half hour, it was joke, 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 joke. Right? Like, the first half hour was written by the same guys who bring us every Marvel movie. I mean, I almost wonder if it comedy. was literally, yeah, yeah, I almost wonder if it was literally, like, a Disney note, like, hey, the rest of this movie's super depressing, can you at least give us something in the first 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> exactly, and, and that's the thing, and then, like, once that dropped out, I started to settle into the film a little bit, but mm -hmm. then it, but then, it, it's hard to ignore the fact that this movie is two and a half hours long, right? Like, really? I'd like to find the actual runtime, right? First of all, I can look that up. 45 minutes of trailers. Eight trailers before this movie. Jeez, and it, really? And it made me. That's why, I like, like four. Yeah. That is why when. That's why when I contacted you, we were supposed to be recording this at 10 p.m. Right behind the fucking curtain. I got out at 10 o'clock, and was like, "Season, my movie just got out." And at <laughs> that point, I feel like Season was home in a fucking bubble bath, waiting for me to call him. Close. <laughs> uh, we are looking at a two-hour, 33-minute runtime on that. Yeah. So, like, any moment. And, and, and you feel it. I mean, I felt it. Like, there were moments where I'm like, this is a good place to end this movie. Oh, hey. What, what's uh, happening? For me, those moments existed, but, but it wasn't, like, disappointment that it was over, you know? And that probably speaks to the fact that I was very much enjoying myself and you weren't, right? Well, it's right? not that I wasn't like, enjoying so... myself. It's just that, like, because the, the final scene on Krang or Crag or whatever the final planet was called, like, mm -hmm. Wicked Cool Planet, favorite Star Wars planet, like, nominee by Devin Decker. I mean, that fight and and, the, and what they do visually with the sand and the, the red sand underneath, it was yeah. just fantastic. Was yeah, really, and the fact really that it, beautiful. And the fact that it turned to, like, glass in, in areas where they were black. Oh, it was, yeah, like, yeah really like, well done. There was done. some beautiful stuff in that sequence, and I'm like, I get why this happened, because we didn't get one of these, right? Mm -hmm. And if there's mm -hmm. a formula to every Star Wars movie, like cool on the ground battle is part of that right and you didn't get that so i'm like i'm okay that this happened mm -hmm. i'm not upset that this happened but like it was a moment where like well, we could have ended it here right and oh yeah no there definitely was but but when i had that moment watching return of the king I cried that it kept going. I legit got to a third ending and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I just didn't feel that. But sorry, you were saying. No, no. I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. It's, But it's, I feel like there's stuff up top that they could, tri that they could have trimmed down to make this two hours. Yeah. Like, like, especially the fact that like, basically this movie is fucking Mad Max in space. <laughs> yeah, man, I, you're not wrong. I like that you constantly say that I'm not wrong. It really is quite validating. 
<laughs> I, I'm not lying. I'm being completely sincere, but it's nice to hear that, like, I don't know. I, it was, but it's it was, just the it's the lost ship in space. They're just, just sitting there, just waiting for the attack, right? And they're basically just, it's like they're waiting for fuel. We have hours of fuel. Yep. We just got to keep staying out of blaster range. Yeah, man. All right. So, I, I mean, like... So do so we want to focus the, on anything, the, like, concrete about it? Like, we, we've had, like, 15 minutes to, like, dink around with, like... Our experience yeah, so let's let's whole. well let's let's go, let's go from top to bottom a little bit since we already started kind of at the top. You talking about some of the, the humor stuff that's in there? Yeah. Um, I uh, I have to say one of the things that I really was surprised by, and this ended up following through in the entire thing, was actually how hopeful this movie ended up being. I think in one of the only in one of the few ways in which they kind of broke that Star Wars formula, they broke one of the biggest rules in Star Wars. They didn't have a dark middle chapter, you know. Well, and if you, next one. And if next one really is to be the last, then no, like... there's not. They've already confirmed that there's going to be an episode ten. Have Unless really? that was like fake. But I know that they. I know that. I know, that I know that they've said that um, Johnson's going to get to do like uh, a whole other spinoff series. Yeah, but I'm fairly certain it is a it is a next trilogy. No, 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 no. It, his his trilogy is supposed to be like a, a Rogue One, but they want to expand it out. I don't know. I'm just saying. Like it felt like. I'm certain that I've read somewhere that that episode ten is happening. That much I believe. I can totally believe that some some asshole out there is trying to get that made right now. That, but I don't think that'll ever come to fruition. And if it does, it'll be so much later in our lifetime that I might be okay with it. But it's not going to happen anytime soon with the way that that this story has been unfolding. Um, I think Disney's smarter than that, to be entirely honest. Yeah, right. They're smart enough to buy a Fox. So, <laughs> hey man, um, and they're smart so enough like, to buy Fox, and their first thing being Deadpool two will still be rated R. Yes, <laughs> did. Um, but but yeah, I mean, like they didn't do the dark middle chapter for this one. But I mean, like I was so I was so ready, I was so prepared for this to be a total empire that I was just like, all right, everybody's gonna die. People I love are not gonna be the same people at the end of this film, but that's all right, I'm in. And then it ended up being like funny but also like extremely hopeful the last moment of the movie with the, with, the, with the rebellion like actually like ready to go was just awesome you know and luke dying so spoiler alert i guess no luke, no there are no more spoiler alerts we're gonna talk about shit luke fucking yeah. dies so when luke dies which i think we all knew was gonna happen he dies in one of the best most hopeful empowering deaths in the unit in the in the star wars story in the star wars universe right like it's not like Ben Kenobi, who sacrifices himself. It's not like Yoda, who just dies of old age. Like, Luke finds peace with himself and just is done. Right? Like, it, it is the most it is the most religious death that they could have given him in the most religious story that they've told. He literally, like, finds Nirvana and no longer needs to exist. Like, <laughs> how amazing I, is that? I can't disagree. And it was... Here's my problem with that. Um, the second that... Uh, uh, Kylo Ren takes his sword and cuts him, and I'm expecting mm -hmm. that Obi Wan moment, and he's not there. And then mm -hmm. he says the whole thing where he's like, "Kill me in anger, and I'll be with you always, like your father." I'm like, "Oh, fucking bullshit!" Has he been a Force ghost literally this whole movie? Like literally this whole movie has he been a ghost? And he died when the temple crushed him. And then I was super happy when I'm like, "No, no, 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 no! You, you overthought it, Devin." He's just been, like, spectacular projecting. Um, and I knew He's that it wasn't him time. when he showed up on in the, the, the space thing and he has no gray in his beard and it's neatly trimmed. I'm like, well, some shit's going on here. Well, I, in retrospect, I see that. But at the moment, in the moment, I didn't question in it. I was like, oh, like, oh, he got a haircut. I thought, I thought his little fish maids gave him a, gave him a haircut. Oh, he's nuts. He showed up. They were fucking nuns. Yeah, his, yeah, yeah, man. He, no, they totally leaned into the religious they, aspect they this did, time around. And I was like, okay with yeah. that, hundred percent. So <laughs> just, let I, me just ask to, you then. That, I want to just tie that into the Yoda scene. So that's okay. what bummed me out about the Yoda scene, really, because mm -hmm. Luke, in like the most religious that we have seen a Jedi ever, right? Mm -hmm. Um, him picking up a fucking magic torch and being like, "I'm gonna burn this shit to the ground." That means something. Mm -hmm. But fucking then Magic Yoda showed up and being like, lightning bolt, bitch. 
Do you know what I honestly felt like? The, well, and we learned in the end, though, why he did that is because the books weren't in there. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, which yeah. was great. Because that was like a really it, subtle right. thing. So it's such a super Yoda thing to do that, like, he gives Luke that piece of, like, destroying the tree and and watching the tree burn, but also knowing he knows full well the books aren't in there. And he's being that trickster god that he always was in these in these stories, yeah. which is, is like, Loki. I think he was just – I also see – you know the other reason why I'm totally okay with the Yoda scene? And this is totally removed from the narrative, but the idea that it felt like it was an apology because it was clearly an actual puppet that they used – and it was Frank Oz being awesome. And, like, it felt like it was an apology for episode two. Like, and, you know, so, like, as a fan that saw episode two in theaters, I was ex- I was ecstatic that I got to see, for the first time in theaters, like, see a puppet Yoda on screen, you know? Because the Yoda that I'd gotten in the past had either been a shitty-ass puppet that didn't move out of a chair in Phantom or CGI nonsense in the other two. That's fair. I can see that as an apology. All, yeah. I, all I hear is Miss Piggy, though, whenever Yoda speaks. <laughs> um, all right, so why don't we do this? Yeah. Why don't you probably talk to me about a couple of things that just rubbed you the wrong way, and we'll, we'll figure out if, if I can make sense of them or if I feel the same way. Uh, I just might, because that's the thing, is I might agree with you on some of this stuff, and I just might not care as much. <laughs> I guess the pacing of the narrative, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm all about, like, different things going on at different times but there was shit I legitimately cared about and then there was shit that I did not care about like when they were on the cool casino planet I was kind of all about that I'm not gonna lie to you so like every time they Mm -hmm. cut away from that to like show Ray with Luke or to show Poe like trying to behave on the ship I'm like the just tell the story like i don't like i know that other stuff is happening who is this for like literally nothing is happening in these moments let the yeah. one thing happen and then get to the, and then go to but it. i i know i, I, think I that, know that it's star wars and i know that that's how stories yeah. are told but i just the difference in other star wars right the ones that came before mm-hmm. is that yes you have that split narrative you have ongoing storylines parallel storytelling but i'm in I w- i'm always interested in all of them right yeah looking at empire and you call this like a two and a half minute reminder that a two and a half hour reminder that empire strikes back exists and it's true but like them on cloud city and luke on fucking dagobah like i am invested in both of those it's not like and also vader storyline yeah. that's also a key right. story plot line that they keep cutting to in that so yeah 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 because like, in this, what it's mirrored by Ray and then the Resistance and then Kylo Ren doing his thing, and then at some point it splits off into four. So maybe that's what it is. Is maybe it just got cut too convoluted? Yeah, it's like you could wrap this up, or I don't like just. But like then it would cut to stuff, and I'm like, this is literally something I don't give a shit about right now. Like I don't <laughs> care. I don't care that like Poe Dameron decides to mansplain to this fucking admiral. And, like, that's all I could think of. And I'm like, did they just have Poe Dameron explain to Laura Dern, like, how to pilot a spaceship and run a rebellion? Yeah, what but from a character about... perspective, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, from a character you know, perspective, his whole storyline in this one, right, is about him growing and learning that that he can't just be, like head first right and what it is is it's the story you never got with han han never learned his lesson in the original trilogy and this is watching poe the closest thing that we had to han solo like actually um actually start to learn and grow and i think that that's like a key thing for for this particular trilogy over the other one is like yeah. we're seeing kylo learn faster than Dar- than vader ever did and he might possibly be saved we're seeing poe learn faster than han ever did so he might actually possibly make something of himself we're seeing ray learn faster than luke ever did so she might actually be able to save the universe unlike luke where he failed right like like i think that that's that's what they're doing in those moments and you know whether or not you're invested in them like i you know it is what it is but like i wanted 
more of every single one of those stories. So like every time they cut away from something I liked, sure, there was a moment of disappointment that I wasn't going to see more kangaroo racing, but like then they cut back to, but then they cut back to what's going on with like, um, with Ray training or Kylo, like and Ray talking to one another. And like, that was super interesting to me. Right. So I it, haven't the, brought that up at all. The Kylo, um, Ray conversations. Those were the best part of the movie. Those right yeah. there, hands down, right. my favorite part of the film. Because just like the way that they did it, the slight shift from them being in the world to being in their own world, those really, really worked for me. As well, well, and I think conceptually, when she went those down scenes... the black hole. Oh, well, yeah, and that ties into this thing. Yeah. Like, I think conceptually, it's because those moments are what this movie's message is all about. I mean, like, basically, what they're doing in those moments is they're smacking you in the face with their entire like, like this is it's it, good and evil are not black and white. It's always going to be a debate. It's always going to be a discussion, which is why there can't ever be one last Jedi, which I think is like the big joke of the 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 um of the name. <laughs> for the for the movie is I think that it, when it comes down to it and I think what's going to have to end up being is that in order for there to be balance you need to have two you can't balance one thing right like you need to you, so like the idea is, is that you need a, a weight on either side of the scale in order for it to well, for there to be you can't balance one thing you can't have balance between one thing yeah one so thing, like the idea yeah. right yeah so yeah so the <laughs> Well, like, I, else? like, look at I'm yeah. balancing a plate right now on my finger. That's I'm balancing one thing, but that plate itself does not balance against anything else. And as I said right after it, you need to have something on the other side of the scale. <laughs> but it's not a scale; it's my finger. I guess maybe I'm I'm balancing it in a different way. Words are weird, right? I'm sorry. Anyway, I, I'm being a dick to you, and I know. So I guess like. This has been a good talk so far because I'm realizing that, like, maybe the meh that I felt was the fact that, like, it was long and I was surrounded by people who, like, just didn't seem to get it. And, yeah, like, but, like, but also if you weren't connecting with the stuff that's happening in the first 30 minutes, the movie, the rest of the movie kind of falls on its face because, like, like as all good movies do, like, it's it's, it's set up. It's, it's setup set up. is important, and if it's setup isn't working for you, it's setup is just not working for you. All I can say is I'm sorry it didn't work for you because man, did I fucking fall in love with it like instantly, and like you know, and and I am watching these through rose tinted glasses. But the best part about something like Star Wars is it doesn't matter, man. Watch away, like in, in any way you need to to enjoy them, just consume it. So like I, you know. I don't care. The uh, that like I I think that's one of the things that I learned from Force Awakens and now watching. Last Jedi is there were so many um, there was so much criticism of Force Awakens being like oh it's just feeding nostalgia it's just going back and it's just taking those things that you love and just throwing it back at you again and this entire time I was watching this movie having the exact same feelings being like oh they didn't really learn their lesson and then like an hour and a half in I was like I don't care that they didn't learn that they didn't learn that particular lesson because I think it's a crap lesson I'm so happy to eat this meal again well, that's, like that's fantastic that that's how you take it away. Because I 100% believe that the message of The Last Jedi is move the fuck on. Those other ones existed. We gave you a movie that acknowledged that their existence. Now we're going to burn it all to the fucking ground and try to tell you a new story. Oh, yeah. And I'm excited. I am excited I'm for them to, to get excited. this all up. Dude, yeah. the scene with Snoke. The scene with Snoke. That literally mm -hmm. I could watch every day for the rest of my life. Like, just schedule it for, like, the 20 minutes to watch Kylo Ren take Rey before uh, Grand Commander Snoke. Yeah, man. That scene was so fucking good. That yeah. scene was so good. Kylo being able to trick him and, and all of that. Like, and then the fight, and then them working together like showing actual balance between the two i'm like this is new this is different this does not feel like anything i've seen in star wars ever before and snoke's whole speech before that is we need to burn the past down yeah yeah man uh, and like but i think there's this there's this element of balance <laughs> like the idea is, is you can't be attached to the past but you still need to remember that it that it happened 
if that makes sense. You know what I mean? And I think that that's where and that's where Ray is going to have to bring Ben in order to, to like get him to finally chill the fuck out is like he's so ready to just completely forget the past that she's just like, you can't do that. You can move on from it, but you cannot just forget it. You cannot just burn it to the ground and destroy it. And like, I think that that's a lot of what they were doing in this movie is they were like, we are moving forward, but also we are not forgetting where we came from. And like, so in that sense, I also really enjoyed it too. Well, I also think that he does need to let go of the fact that Luke thought about killing him because of the darkness inside. Of, of course body. he does. Yeah, of course like, he does. That was, that was a thing, right? Nice mm-hmm. job movie. Nice job movie showing us the same scene three times and each time it meaning something different that was so well done all right man so give me a rundown of like one or two things that you just thought were just fucking silly honestly the, the, like i'm holding for commander hux like that bothers yeah. me yeah. every yeah. time every time i think about it i'm like that was fucking dumb that was the dumbest thing i it, it, it like and it set the whole pace of the film for me to be like, ugh. And then like it the, is the very first moment. It yeah. is literally the first and moment the of the movie. So ugh of that was all of these people laughing at it. I'm like, this is bad. Uh-huh. Comedy. Laughing at that joke on screen. <laughs> Says the guy that saw Daddy's Homes two twice. I think that we might have skewed versions of what comedy is. <laughs> that you know what? Honestly, the second time I saw Daddy's Home was to make sure I had the good seat. For Star Wars. I got to the movie theater at 3.30. I asked them what theater Daddy's Home was playing. Well, no. What was playing in theater one before Star Wars? It was Daddy's Home 2. And I said, one ticket for Daddy's Home 2, please. And then I was the only person in Daddy's Home 2. Well, Dale was there. But it was us. It was just the two of us. And we sat there. And then after the movie ended, we just stayed in those seats until the Star Wars started. Until the Star Wars started. Oh, man. Like, that's why. Like, it wasn't, like, a thing. I'm happy I saw it a second time because I I learned that Mel Gibson was an astronaut and just how (laughs) fucking banana pants that is. And I heard a line that I did not hear the first time because people were laughing over it. And that line may be the funniest line ever to me. And it's why we went to IHOP after Amazing. the movie. Um, but yeah, like that just, it, like, I, like I said, it felt like it felt like something out of the parody of Star Wars. It didn't mm-hmm. feel like something that exists within Star Wars. Same with like, there were little jokes when they got to the casino planet. Like they were small, but I'm just like, nah, okay. Like, what was that? Like these, like, the park, I don't know. Like, it's just, that was the stuff. But I will say that, like, I'm holding for Commander Hux. I just feel like, that felt like placeholder. That felt like, you have Domino Gleason, you have Oscar Isaacs. They have a history together because they were in Ex Machina together, right? So, like, mm-hmm. on one level, they're riding on that. They're riding on the fact that it's these two guys interacting with one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... But then the interaction is just so fucking basic where I'm like, I wish that like this was one of those moments where Poe was really clever so that like, it, like, you're, like you said, it, it sets the pace for the whole movie. And like my pace for that movie is he's like, I'm going to try the I'm holding for bit and it's going to work like, like what? Like, yeah, I man. know what he's doing in that. He's clearly stalling while he waits for his fucking boost to charge, right? I'll stay in my fucking my fucking drift a little bit longer till I get the purple sparks, and then I can get close enough to the dreadnought to destroy it. I liked that. I got what he was doing. I just wish that it was a better stall tactic. And I feel like we've seen better stall tactics in other Star Wars films. Sure. I mean, yeah, like, you man, already I... said that there's an, an analog between him and Han Solo. Han mm-hmm. Solo would have stalled for, like, with a good thing. Like, it would have been a good Han Solo moment. That's, like, that's why you love that fucking character. It wouldn't have been a literal Lone Star moment. Yeah. I mean, sure, man. Like, like I, I don't know. I've I know, already no, I said my piece on the... You've said your piece on it, but, like, 100%, like, 
that and that's the thing right so that set my whole train wobbly and then mm -hmm. fucking there's the shot to the bridge and leia flies out into space and then somehow she has developed her force abilities and as we said in the last episode clearly force sensitive would be cool to see leia as a jedi but like she's in the vacuum of space how is she able to do that stuff well, I think the idea is that she was keeping, like, a vacuum around her with the Force. I mean, because they showed all the stuff moving out of her way as she was going forward, there was clearly, like, a bubble around her. Like, not like a... a bubble's not the right word, because they didn't put, like, an actual visual like bubble around her. Like yeah, but they definitely... Her yeah, they definitely put an aura around her. Like, and, and I thought what they were going to do was they were going to say that she survived long enough to, like, get last words out, and then she was going to die. But the fact that she <laughs> survives, survives it to the end of the damn movie, to the point where I'm wondering how they're going to handle her in the next movie, that that did throw me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what is this? Like, what? Like, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with with her doing this because it's something that I wanted, right? We we spoke we spoke at length about how cool it would be if Leia actually developed her fucking powers, right? And it wasn't mm -hmm. just like yeah, yeah. something that's alluded to. Or when it's fucking plot convenient for the movie. Um, and then she right. does that, and I'm like, but that was so plot convenient for the fucking movie! And then, like, oh, I don't use any other force the, uh, the the entire fucking movie. Nope, just... Don't they, they... They hinted her being force-sensitive in the first one, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what sparked the whole conversation. And yeah. she's definitely force-sensitive in Jedi. Right. Like, without question. But there's a... But there's a but there's a big fucking leap from being able to understand that the shit between is the force and being yeah. able to manipulate that so you can survive in the harsh vacuum of space long enough to be a burden on the rest of the film. <laughs> and I don't mean that's like I think rude that, to well, say. And here's the thing that and here's the thing I'm gonna say is like like looking at the outside like forces, not just the movie itself, again divorcing from the narrative people love leia man and and especially with carrie fisher dying this year they they wanted something that they could really latch onto. and i think finally giving leia an actual force moment like was kind of important for those fans you know i'm not saying it works for everybody but i but i can tell you that there was a distinct group of people in the movie with me that the second that that happened they were giving they were they would have jumped out of their seats if it if it had been all of us jumping out of their seats they would have been happy to do it you know but the but like there is i think i think there is a mindset that like she kind of earned that moment and carrie fisher earned in that in a meta moment. sense not yeah. i get yeah, where yeah, you're yeah. coming from i just but like again it's like, and that's the next thing. Like, it's mm -hmm. like all of your, like, it just set, like, it, it just started off on really shaky ground for me. Sure. Like, the, I, I don't know, the whole bombing run, and I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm like, I know it's going to work, but like, oh, yeah, let's, oh, and then, oh, and then her sister, and oh, oh, you care about this character. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh man! And yeah, I, 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 there was no weight to anything. There's my problem. There's my big problem. Like saying what I just said. I am Devin fucking Decker. I am Devin fucking Decker. I fucking cried at Daddy's home too today. <laughs> I had already seen it. And well, see, there it is. You you blew all your you blew your emotional load all over Mel Gibson. I blew my emotional load all over fucking the Orville. Which, like, I was going to keep it a secret that I've been watching the Orville. But if we're going to talk about blowing emotional loads, I watched three episodes of the Orville today. Episodes 7, 8, and 9. Episodes 7 and 8 fucking tore me apart and built me back up. And then tore me apart again. So, like, All right, I watched science fiction today that, like, rang true with me with what it was trying to say. Um, and, like, that's me. Like, that's me. I get invested, and my emotions go along with what I'm watching in the cinema. That is why I love movies, right? Someone once said, I don't know how to experience emotions, and that's why I didn't like the film Inside Out. 
<laughs> right? Because that movie has nothing to say to you because you don't understand emotions. And, like, that's not something I want to ascribe to, but I definitely know what emotions are when I'm at the fucking movie theater and feeling them during yeah. films. So, like, Man, I, I was watched... I was an emotional wreck coming out of Star Wars tonight. I really was. Like, I, was, I went on a journey with that movie. Like, I, I feel bad that you didn't go on the same journey I did because it felt cathartic and like all sorts of good stuff but it was definitely hitting me and, I, and I, I'm very happy for you I think what that, that works for me on the level of the fact that I'm glad that we were each had two different experiences and were able to share and discuss them and I promise I will hand the microphone and the stage over to you after I say this but like if I just need to exemplify a moment in this film that like had no punch for me and, and, it's, and it's because of choices that they made. Finn is completely ready to Randy Quaid himself. Finn is ready to sacrifice himself to the battering ram cannon. And like that moment, this whole movie had been leading up to here's more for Finn. Here is more for the character of Finn. We're going to flesh out this character who like really didn't have much of an arc in the first movie besides I don't want to be a stormtrooper anymore. And they mm -hmm. do a lot with him. They do a lot with him. <clears throat> so then, when he's about to sacrifice himself, I'm like, this is fucking awesome that he's going to sacrifice himself. And we've spent the whole movie creating the character of Rose, who was like 100% more dynamic than he ever was in his first movie. Mm -hmm. um, and if she comes up and she steps up and she takes his position, I'd be okay with that. Right? And, and, I, and, like, we know what happens and we know why that didn't happen so that you would have the Luke stuff. But then she comes in and she stops him from having that noble sacrifice. And she does the whole speech of, we're not going to win by fighting hate. We're going to win by saving that, that which we love. And they have the world's least convincing kiss... Well, I don't as, because I don't think because I don't think he loves her in the way that she loves him, dude. But, but, but I don't anyway, even sorry, feel yeah. that she loves him the way that that the movie told us, and like I know that she collapsed afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. But like, there's that cool explosion in the backwards, the, in the backwards, in the background, and it's like this moment where like it 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 would be that fucking money shot in any other action film, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so if, if she went in for the kiss, but he didn't reciprocate, I'd get that. I'd get that because he doesn't love her. He clearly has some weird feelings for Ray that I'm okay with. But yeah. like those are the things that this movie has told us about the whole time. So mm -hmm. if she goes in to kiss him and then collapses before their lips meet, that means something. But them sharing the world's least convincing kiss on both sides... It's just like, all right, so that and she's not dead, though, is she? Because then that's fucking stupid that she sacrificed her life so he couldn't stop the well, battering she's, ram. <laughs> well, she's not dead. We know that. No, we know that she's not dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Like, <laughs> but, it's, but it's all emotional weight of the scene sucked out of the room. Oh, no, see, because when she leaned in for that kiss, see, I just, we just, like, everybody just, like, cheered when she kissed him, and then that look on his face when he's just like, what the fuck just happened, and laugh, just laughter, just, like, like that, not, like, not, like, uproarious laughter, but, like, that, like, oh, oh isn't that cute, like, puppy dog laughter, like, it, so everybody was just in it, man, and I, I just, it was such a good moment, because I'd kind of been thinking that that was where she was going, and I'm really interested to see now where he goes, because as much as he's into Ray. If she's gonna go full Jedi, she can't be with him, right? She's so if it's this whole thing, Jedi. She's I, not, I don't know, man. That's the whole point of this movie. Is that I think that her and part Kylo Jedi is I think, wrong? Oh, her I think and Kylo, her and Kylo, Kylo are definitely gonna mash bits. I think that they go off to the sunset together. That's I don't. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it'll be sexual, but they will definitely oh, just mash them bits. <laughs> As, due to an unfortunate autocorrect error. My my record of it says Ren and Kyle Ray and Kyle Ren. Will mash bits. <laughs> Hashtag called it. Um, no. Kyle, Kyle Ren. Kyle I want to watch that. It's like Chad Vader. Chad Vader and Kyle Ren. <laughs> yeah, right? That's, that's exactly what Kyle Ren is. Um, thank you, Autocorrect, for this one thing. So I'm going to turn it over to you. I have been just, like, expelling all of my issues with it. You had, like, what sounds like a religious experience with this film. What worked for you? 
what were the moments? What's the moment that you're like, this is why I'm going to see this movie again? Because that, honestly, end of the day, the reason why I walk out of that and go, eh, I had no desire to see it again. Justice oh, man, League, yeah. I could not wait till the second time. Ragnarok, I couldn't wait for the second time. Even Daddy's Home too, to some extent. I was excited I got a second viewing of it. If I never see The Last Jedi again, my life will be okay. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm excited to go and see it again this weekend because I'm going to just go and see it, I think. Like, I, you know, it all kind of worked for me. Like, it, in a lot of the ways, like, it's because the stuff that, that really got to you, it's not that that stuff was awesome to me. It's that that stuff just never really stuck out to me. So all of the stuff in between, all of the story, like, the storytelling was was so good and all of the new characters were fantastic everything from rose down to fucking benicio del toro whatever boba fett's gonna end up being there playing benicio um, del toro <laughs> hey, do you think you could show up for five minutes on set and just be yourself yeah man <laughs> don't eat chili beforehand because we can't have a usual suspects moment but um <laughs> as long as you don't fart we'd love to have you in our film oh god <laughs> <laughs> um yeah man like, like i just I, I loved all of the the really the big message of of like the small thing like lose don't lose hope has always been like a huge part of all of these movies right but in this the you know where they try and make it the darkest although i don't think they never get truly as dark as um as empire ever did um I think the darkest this movie gets is the reveal that Luke tried to kill Kylo. But even then, as dark as that moment is, you know that there's more to it than that. And sure enough, you learn less than a half an hour later the whole story. Um, but like, as dark as things get, the idea that the smallest spark can still reignite the rebellion, right? And so down to the last shot of the movie with that kid with the ring on was just so was just it was just so perfectly packaged for me. Like it just it was hand delivered to me in my seat. And I was just happy to have all of it. You know? Like, I, I think that all of the Laura Dern stuff worked really well for me. I think that all of the... Um, I mean, we lost Akbar, man. Like, that was a huge moment for me. When they revealed the, that... Uh, when, when I mean, when they blew up Leah the bridge. Died, she's magic. Yeah. And, like, and you know, what, and, you know it, to an extent, even that moment with Leia, like, being able to come back to the ship. I, you know, my, I welled up a little bit. Like, the idea that she finally was able to tap into the Force, and the idea that it happens in a moment as dramatic as that, I, I was just totally sold. Like, I was totally okay with that moment. I think my, I think where there was no wind in my sails there is Kylo Ren does not blow up the bridge. He, like, takes his finger off the trigger, and I'm like, as bad as this is gonna sound, I bet on some level they wish they blew up Leia right there. Because <laughs> it would, like, totally solve unfortunate things because of what happened to Carrie Fisher in real life. And then a second later they blow it up, and I'm like, yeah, no, but she's going to be fine. Like, this means nothing to me. Like, mm. there was never any moment in this... There were no stakes in this film for me. Ever. There were oh, never see, like, any stakes in this film for me. I just, I wanted to know more about Ray, and they got more into that. I wanted to see what what Luke had been up to. I got all of that. I, I wanted to know how the Rebellion was ever going to, like, come back from what happened at the end of the first one. I mean, like, like there was so much stuff that I wanted to know that they, they didn't answer, but they gave me enough to keep me going so that I am excited for the last one. So, like, it was just everything that I, I wanted, but I didn't also, I didn't go in with a checklist of knowing what I wanted. They just happened to hit all the right notes for me, man. Well, that's cool. I can get behind that. I like that. Can we talk about the fact that I love that Ray's parents are just fucking nobodies? I, I'm curious if they stick with that. I, I love it right now, and I'm really happy, and if that's how what it ends up being, that would be awesome. But I don't... I wonder if they have the balls to make that the, the actual story for Ray. I, um... I would be very interested. I wonder if she, like, adopts, like, the Kenobi name. I'm, I, I just want her to be Ray Kenobi. <laughs> I get that. I get that you wanted to be Ray <laughs> Kenobi, even though but the she can't timeline she can't of have, that is yeah. fucking yeah, no, she, she cannot be. But but if she takes on when she if and when she becomes a Jedi, or if and when she whatever she does, right? I mean, like if she ends up adopting a name because she doesn't have one, right? Like that, like, that would that be phenomenal. <laughs> oh God, what if she what if she doesn't what if she's not a Skywalker, but she takes on the name Skywalker? What if she's not a but because she marries Ben Ben Skywalker? No, because he's Solo? not. He's Ben Solo, so she'd be Ray Solo. Yeah, 
I, I don't know. I want them to ride off into the sunset, mash bits, and then I don't know. Actually, there was a moment where I'm like, I'd love it if Poe and Finn and Ray were in like a big polyamorous relationship. That worked for me. On, like, oh my god! The moment levels. when Poe and Ray, also like when Poe and Ray finally meet, like the like jokey like acknowledgement that there's been two whole movies and they haven't actually met each other yet. Yeah, that's good. That was good. That one worked yeah. for me, because like it's the end of the movie. That's why you yeah. do little jokes like that that are like, oh yeah, we get to laugh and stuff. Also, and and not not that it will ever change your mind about the opening with Poe, but I recommend that you go back and watch some of the stuff with Han trying to fake calling in what the Millennium Falcon's doing, because those moments when he's making up lies are it, are hilarious in a different way. Lies. No, no, he doesn't. The joke is, is that he gets two steps into a lie, sucks at it, and then starts smashing the microphone. <laughs> right, and I'm okay with that because he tries. Do no, do not. There is no try. I fucked myself <laughs> over with a Star Wars quote to save you the satisfaction. Deny you the satisfaction? Yeah, I, I think. Know. Oh, man. But yeah, I don't know. I walk away really loving it. I don't know. I'm excited to see what happens next, and I'm excited to go back to this one, and I'm excited to like get the trilogy and like have the trilogy. I don't know. I think that a little bit of time after it, but... And it didn't. Ex it, it did not excite me the way the Force Awakens excited me. And that's and that at the end of the day, that's my issue. And I don't know if it's because I was so hurt by Rogue One. I hated Rogue One. I legitimately hated Rogue One. I wanted to walk I, out of it. I wanted to walk out of it. I'm still warm on Rogue One. I, I it's it, it definitely was a flawed movie, but considering what they could have been I, I i you're coming you gotta understand man you're talking to a kid that went into phantom menace with his hopes high i was 10 no my brother was turning 10 and we were at disney and we like we went to this gorgeous theater in disney to go see the premiere of episode one and even then when i was a kid i i realized what shit i was really watching and it would think, i think it might be the first time that i was watching a movie and i was just like Oh, they wanted me to like this, and I don't. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I had not liked movies before that, but it was the first time ever where I felt, like, disappointed that I didn't like it, you know? And um, and so I have that fresh in my head every time I see a Star Wars movie now. And and now, getting to see them in theaters, like, this is, you know, it's it's... It's refreshing. <laughs> Rogue One was still a blast because it wasn't episode one. I, I have no words. I have no way to describe that other than to, to counter with Chewbacca already cooked that porg. Why wouldn't he eat it? Because then he started to feel. <laughs> like you he, totally should have just eaten it. That would have been it. funny. He if he just if he just it. looked one in the face and just ate it. <laughs> that, that, like that little one. Like, I honestly I kinda wanted no, I kinda wanted the reveal to be that he threw it away and then all the other porgs jumped on it to eat it themselves. Yeah, right? like, I'm just like this could work on levels that like they should have us punch up the next Star Wars. That's what they should do. <laughs> yeah, like because there's like dark stuff like that that would really work, humor wise. <clears throat> I don't know, and I think like I have another issue with the fact that like I only know the names of a bunch of stuff because of marketing. Like they're never called Porg in the movie. Yeah. BB yeah, but e I mean, never that's been true. But that's been true since the first movie. I mean, or at least the second movie. Boba Fett never gets named in the movies. That's true. We only know his name from toys, from toys and comic books and and shitty Christmas specials. You gotta get past it, man. You gotta get <laughs> never, past man. It. I will never let anyone forget that that is technically still considered canon. Not because it's ever been recognized as canon, but because it specifically has never been recognized as not. When there is, we live in a world in which there is literally a list put out by Disney saying this is what we don't consider canon anymore, and guess what's distinctly not on that list? <laughs> so Snoke, his identity not being revealed, that bother you at all? I'm okay. Yes. Uh, no, no. Like I'm okay with it in that like I, I, they better, but they better answer it in the next movie. I'm okay with not knowing it yet, but if they just kind of let this one go in the wind, I don't know how I'll feel. Separate from the Ray's parents stuff, where if they let that just be a thing, I'm totally okay with it. That was exactly why I asked, Siege, and I wanted to know where your line of knowledge lay. Well, that's that's it right there. They, it, they they have to tell me who Snoke is. I'm curious if, like, he's maybe one of the other Jedi, but then why would he be Kylo's master? I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know. 
I'm, I'm confused, uh, yeah, and I'm there's excited. A lot, uh, there's a lot of things that it could be. I think he's that guy with the head, big forehead <laughs> guy. And he got all, and he got all crunched, like, like, um, what's his name from Kids in the Hall? I'm squishing your head. I squish your head. I squish it, and then I crush. I crush your oh, head. I crush your head. You. I crush your you. head. That big pink forehead guy. I crush your head, and now are you a Snoke? Oh man, I wanted to be like Jar Jar Binks or something ridiculous. <laughs> I wanted it to be Leia. I what if legitimately everybody it to be keeps Leia. saying that? Well, it can't be now, right? <laughs> well, oh, it, it man. could be. Like, I wanted it to be Leia because, and here's the thing: like that was my that was my. I wrote a whole thing on why Leia is Snoke, and then this movie fucking leaned into that idea of mine, and that was the one of the worst parts for me. What is, and wait, how did this movie lean into it? If anything, it established very distinctly that they are not the same person. Because Benicio del Toro, as Benicio del Toro, was like, uh, "Good and bad, they're only names, man. Don't join the machine." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, right." Because Leia grew up in a time of civil war, and she saw that that civil war gave people purpose. And like built up industry, so then peace comes to the fucking galaxy, and then she's like, "Hey, I'm gonna invent an evil guy," and oh people God. will follow the evil guy. And then in my other, in my in my downtime, I will also have the rebellion. And if she measures both sides of it, then you know it's good for the economy. War is good for the economy. Oh, God, here we go. This is it. We've finally gotten Devin's true political motives here. It's not my <laughs> political motive. I thought that, like, it just fit with her character. Like, she's only ever known war. Mm. You're not wrong, but no, it's not her. <laughs> but then, like, but then, but do not deny that there is a scene in this film that is all about that. That is all about the fact that, like, Oh, let's see how this guy was able to afford this luxury space yacht. Oh, yeah. he sold to the bad guys. Oh, motherfucker, he sold to the good guys. No, no, that's definitely, I mean, that's a huge part of this, though, right? Like, again, it comes down to that whole message, that idea of, like, good and evil are just concepts. And, like, we need to we need to move on from this idea that the old Star Wars actually kind of really kind of pushed the the idea that, good and evil are two separate things and good will always triumph over evil and they're like no 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 <laughs> you kind of lost the thread lucas because what you started off by saying is there needs to be balance <laughs> but then by the end of the, that trilogy we have dancing ewoks and all the good guys are alive and all the bad guys are dead so what did you do <laughs> like you didn't establish any balance so like the, I, I think that it's funny because it's almost like watching star wars correct itself as the force will often do why did you go into the X Files theme or Ninja Turtles theme? I couldn't tell which one it that was. X Files, I think. <laughs> I've never watched it, but it's like that's the noises you're gonna make right now, Devin. <laughs> All right. So, in our last three minutes, anything to add on the Last Jedi? Oh man, people should go out and see it. Like, see it and 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 feel your feels for it. Because if you enjoyed it half as much as I did, then then you're gonna have a good time. And if you enjoyed it half as much as I did, it eh, meh, you'll be in a <laughs> meh mood. Also, hopefully you saw it before we talked about literally all of the plot points of the movie. Yeah, um, we 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 didn't talk about Ray's pregnancy. We didn't uh, we didn't talk about uh, that moment when. Well, Finn is addicted to opioids, and that was All honestly right. the moment in this that, like, struck closest to home for me. Because if you don't know it, America is dealing with an opioid epidemic. And to have him addicted to pain pills... I mean, he was just buying him off of BB-8, though. Like, really, it was all the, the droid's fault. Like, if you took him out of the picture, he wouldn't have had anybody to provide. Right, right. It's just... It's, it's a flawed system. <laughs> and... <laughs> I like that Phasma continues to be a fucking nothing. I I want her to come back for the third movie. I hope that they do that. I hope the joke is, is that she just keeps surviving. <laughs> well, she's a clone, right? Like that's gonna be it. Oh my god, that would be such a good reveal. Is that she's? Do they just keep using Phasma clones? Uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, you know, FN two one eight seven. He has some sort of weird connection to this armor. 
So we just keep bringing it back. It's fucking hilarious <laughs> to us. We like to we like to have a good time. We're we're the first order. We're a, <laughs> we're, we're a fun we're a fun dictatorship. Oh, and if God. you want to speak to us as a fun dictatorship, I can be reached at Devin D Decker on Twitter. You can catch me at Siege versus the World on Twitter. And uh, thank you very much for listening to this special episode about The Last Jedi. We hope that you enjoyed it more than I did. And I don't think it's possible to enjoy it more than Siegen did. But if you were able to, drop us a line. Let us know. Um, But for now, we're going to pass it over to Will. So thank you very much for listening. And have a great evening. May the Force be with you. Thank you for listening to the Say Report with your host, Devin Decker and Siegen Serwick. Please follow the guys on Twitter and Facebook by searching for The Say Report. And you can always subscribe on your podcast channel so this is delivered straight to you and you can enjoy it every week. With apologies to your mother, we'll see you next time.